So you really want to personalize those spells that you cast and make your character more unique and more memorable. This is one of my favorite chapters in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything because it does something that I've been doing for years myself. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to cast your spells and different cool descriptions you can do to make yourself stand out and different ways that your spells can look to really personalize your character. And examples of creative player characters of mine that I've used before, like a paladin who wasn't a paladin. It's time out. <laughs> I'm a ref, get it? This video is perfectly sponsored by Describe, which is very fitting because they are professionally written text boxes for both players and dungeon masters. You have monster descriptions, spell descriptions, location descriptions. Specifically for this video, we're talking about spells and how to better customize them for your game. Describe has literally hundreds and eventually thousands as they keep adding more and more of these text boxes. I got an example for you here of Fireball. The red seed of light zips through the air faster than you can blink. You see it trace against your eyelids as you shut them against the fiery blast that roars out. Opening your eyes, you still see the traces of the crimson bead's path towards its fiery end. Whoa, now that's a description, but even reading that text, that's the first time I've read the fireball text on describe.com. That makes me think of a spellcaster that's magic has traces from where it came from that leaves a shadow that slowly fades. So if this same hypothetical spellcaster cast magic missile or scorching ray, there'd be three streaking marks away from that character from where they came from. But maybe when your character casts these spells, it's completely different. The whole point here of describe.com is give you a bunch of different descriptions to be able to take your descriptions to the next level so check out the description down below use code the dungeon coach you get 10 percent off and right now they're doing a giveaway where they have a whole bunch of stuff they're giving away a hero membership which gets you access to all the stuff on their website mr rex clothing friend of the channel mr rex he has a merch thing that they're in working with describe is really awesome in the DD community they really have been <laughs> across you've probably seen it a bunch of different places but they also have a ticket to gen con and they're giving away hundreds of different digital maps you can download too so uh, check it out in the description down below and let's get into some personalizing spells six months ago in my backstory creation video i have on the list that i ask all my players when they first create their backstory is how do you cast your magic what does it look like i have ran a campaign with three different warlocks in the same campaign and they all felt so different partially because of this. Yes, their spell kit and their subclasses were all different, but the way that they cast their spells, I wanted to make sure that they all felt very different. One had this green flames that surrounded them constantly. The other one had shadows that they would pull the shadows off of their enemies and their own selves to use them for damage. Does that have a mechanical effect tied to it? No, but it's freaking cool. And the third warlock was more mental and had these purple tendrils that would wrap around the target's mind. Great example in the book was a farmer sorcerer who had magic missile chickens. These freaking chickens have zero mechanical weight of any kind but oh my gosh, does that really bring that character to life? And I gotta do it. So here's some next level homebrews, what you can do with this thing. I love doing this myself when I get the rare chance to be a player and make sure any of these things run by your DM. My example is a paladin that I played before. It was just in a little one shot thing, but my paladin had zero magical powers. He was just a normal person that was in over his head and really wanted to be a paladin so bad that he broke into a church and stole a bunch of magic items. Oh coach, you can't just give yourself magic items in your backstory. Now go with me on this here because all of the magic items I had explained my class's features. To explain my paladin aura, I had a necklace around my neck that emitted that aura. How I was able to cast divine smites was a magical sword that I had. And if I didn't have that sword, I wouldn't be able to cast divine smite. Now that might sound a little crazy to some of y'all, but don't be afraid to put restrictions on yourself for some really cool flavor. So no, I was not some holy paladin that emitted an aura of purity or had some divine enchanting powers that I could put onto weapons. I was a normal person whose abilities were explained through these magic items. To save you from the long story, it was part of his backstory and it was a really cool moment when the other players at the table figured out that I was just some normal dude. So if you want to hear more on that and different ways you can create a memorable character that you and everybody else at the table won't forget, I could do an entire video on that too. So hit the like button, leave a comment on that if you want. I just don't want players going around assigning themselves magic items like it's Christmas or something. So here's another character example of mine. I had a dragonborn druid. I, I just love dragonborn. But all of his wild shapes could only shapeshift into scaly type creatures. He was a primal type of druid that could tap into his reptilian ancestry and shapeshift into different forms. And hopefully into a dragon in the future. But this isn't too homebrew crazy. For balance purposes, I still use the beast stat blocks like the druid normally would. I just reflavored them to be a drake scaled version of like a wolf or something. This was a unique restriction that I put on my character that really made him feel more unique. The last thing I want to talk about here are spells. So DMs out there, send this video to your players so they can have some better spell casting descriptions whenever they cast their spells. Because so many times you have your martial class characters, they could describe their flavorful ways that they do stuff. But usually the spell casters, they just say the spell they cast 
and that's it. I urge you players out there to try to spice some things up differently and you can have some awesome descriptions too. How would you describe casting a fireball? Much less how the fireball looks. I'm talking about now you personally, how are you casting? Maybe the brilliant wizard starts to assess the battlefield as he holds one finger into the air. A small bead of energy coalesces at the tip of his finger. He finds a perfect spot for the maximum damage points his finger and the bead flies. Small glowing bead flies through the air, impacts the ground, explodes. Or what if you go for a little more flair and you stick your arm out and the energy starts to come from your forearm and gather in front of your hand. It condenses into a ball as you wrap your fingers around it. You grab the literal fire ball out of the air and you chunk it like a baseball. Still fireball. Or what if you go for a Goku spirit bomb and you stick both hands in the air as the fireball generates and it has this huge massive fireball in the air and you use both hands to send it down. All three of those descriptions are very very different characters casting very different fireballs, but mathematically and statistically, the same fireball. I also want to talk about spell components here, and I don't mean actually tracking them and keeping track of every single one and keeping an inventory of your wizard spell pouch or something. A lot of players and DMs cringe at, at the thought of that. That is a separate category from what I'm about to say. If you want to keep track of components or not and just kind of hand wave them and only track the ones that are super expensive or something, you can totally do that. I've had players on one end of the spectrum that love spell components and track it like a little bookkeeper, and I've had it on the other end where we hand wave all of them. Except the expensive gold costing ones, we just have a gold cost for it and move on. But what I'm talking about here is the inspiration from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything of how to personalize your spells. Use components to describe how you cast them. What if a weird quirk about your characters they always have a match sticking out the side of their mouth? You can always look in the book to see what the actual spell components are, but you could always make it your own. I want to make something up here on the fly. What if this for the spell Dominate Person, the component was a shard of glass that you threw into the ground and it shattered, and as the glass shattered, you pointed at the person and the shards of glass shoot towards the person's mind. Maybe your character has a voodoo doll and does different things to the voodoo doll to cause different types of spells. Mine. What if your warlock's more of a potion brewing evil concoctor that has a potion that they've prepared of the dominate person spell? They chunk the vial at the feet of the target, shatters and they breathe in the fumes casting dominate person. And while we're talking about warlocks, here's another idea that you can use whenever you have that specific spell list that you get from your class. Whenever you have a subclass towards a certain patron, you get a certain list of spells. What if whenever you cast those spells, they look different than any other spell that you cast. If you tap in specifically to the magic of that patron, the magic looks different or sounds different in this description of Dominate Person. I look across the battlefield to the Hobgoblin General and I pull out my patron's voodoo doll. We lock eyes across the battlefield and I grab the head of my voodoo doll. My eyes turn a bright red and I say, my. Whoa. Nobody else at the table would probably ever know what spells that you got from your patron versus other spells that you're casting. Other players usually don't pay attention to that type of stuff, but this character, they would know. And that's just something unique to add cool flavor and be more memorable. <laughs> Once you start going down this road of personalization the first time, it might be a little hard to think of the different ways that you'd cast a spell. Once you get more used to doing it and cast more spells and find the identity or the different flavor for your character, when you learn new spells or even take new spells and add an extra twist to them, it'll make more sense. Earlier this week from all the Tasha's Cauldron videos, I got a comment from Michael. He created an intelligence-based artificial turtle that can create everything himself and his, his spells and all of the different components grow on the back of his shell and whenever he creates the items, he goes inside of the shell and creates them inside the shell like it's his own little workshop. How cool is that? Good job, Michael. So comment down below what cool personalized options you've done for your characters or haven't done yet, but thought of thanks to this video and other inspiration from Tasha's Calder. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had some creative ideas from all the different stuff that I'm trying to throw at you guys to spark some of that creativity. So if you're feeling creative, then hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling super inspired, hit that Patreon button. Stay tuned, stay creative, and think outside that box. Peace.